one of the things you're going to have to know for your pitches and then writing in the class is just the different types of articles you can write for journalism. So this video breaks that down so that you know what you're talking about and you'll be able to more clearly articulate what you want to write because there's just a lot of different ways to go about writing for journalism and you want to make sure you know exactly what it is you're saying. So the first kind of area you want to think about is um, there's a lot of depth for the different topics and categories. And on our modules on Canvas, there's thorough in-depth overviews of each type of article and examples from the real world of those types of articles. And those are great models if you're just like, how do I write, um, for instance, you know, a review, What's a, what does a music review read like? How does that actually sound? You've probably, you know, critiqued a lot of music on your own, but to actually write that is a little bit different. Or how do I write um, a sports profile piece or maybe a long form article, something like that. All of that's available on our modules on Canvas. And I'd really encourage you to look at that proactively as you're thinking about articles. I'd also caution a little bit jumping into maybe a podcast or a long form article right away. It might be good to just dip your feet into, you know, kind of your basic article just to get your feet wet and understand AP style and understand also just how to structure a journalism article because that's a little bit different than what you've done in the past. If you don't see something in the modules, feel free to reach out and I'm, I can easily add more examples. I just try to not overwhelm those modules either because there's a lot of stuff I could put up there. So the different categories that we have are news stories, features, opinion stories, sports, and in-depth stories. Now, the three real categories that you need to worry about are just the first three, news, features, and opinion. Because sports involves news stories, feature stories, or opinion stories. Just like any other kind of category out there, like if you're at a big time newspaper and you're covering like local government, local government's going to have news stories, feature stories, and opinion stories. Same with like if you're on the education beat or if you're on for your class, right? If you're on the campus ministry beat, you could write a news story, a feature story, or an opinion story. The reason I, you know, break out sports is just to kind of give you a sense that that tends to be a larger um, overall section of the newspaper. And I'll talk more specifically about that as we move forward. So the first category is news stories. And as you can see here, news stories stick to the facts. They're very dry in the sense that they don't add a lot of personality to the story. You want to just stick to the facts, establish accurately and in an unbiased way what's happening. Also, it's pretty critical that they're timely. And so generally the stuff we put on the website, those can be news stories. What we're going to put in the print edition this year will generally be a features story. They lack any verbal embellishment, right? So we're not writing poetically in news stories. And they don't need a huge amount of depth that you might get in an, in an investigative piece. So here's an example of a news story. In this news story, it says the high cost of Bay Area living forces some teachers to find second jobs. Now, this isn't necessarily something that we're looking at. You know, a Jesuit, this is obviously um, pulled from the Bay Area down in California, but it's an interesting story, certainly about like just rising costs and how that affects teachers, how that affects a community and whether or not they're able to live where they work, um, which is significant. But notice when you read this story, if you're looking through it, it's very fact based. The, the lead here says teachers in the Bay Area have the unfortunate burden of dealing with high costs of living coupled with not enough pay. This forces some teachers to work multiple jobs to make ends meet. And then the quote is, I've seen some staff members working at restaurants, driving for Uber and other second jobs. Currently in the San Francisco area, the average teacher makes $58,585 a year, which comes as a measly amount compared to the $95,000 average salary in Belmont overall. So they're relying on facts, on reports, on quotes from the principal to establish the tone and the information of the um, article in this case. And notice it jumps right after that, right into um, another fact, another statistic. And that's a lot with news stories. You're giving statistics, you're giving facts, and you're giving quotes. That's a basic news story. A feature story is really four different types of stories. 
There's a news feature, there's an informative feature, a profound human interest feature, and a personal experience or accomplishment feature. They're less timely than news stories. They oftentimes take longer to write, and so um, they don't need to come out right on time for some kind of event, or it's not like a recap of something that's typically a news story. They're often more personal and often aim to provide a previously unseen perspective on an event, issue, or person. So with that last example of, for instance, um, teachers not being able to afford to live in the Bay Area, that was just kind of like a broad overview of what the issue is. And so they talk about, you know, salaries, um, average salary versus teacher salaries, and they get quotes about what's going on financially for teachers. In a feature story, you might find one teacher and write their story and their experience if they're open to sharing that and do a deeper dive into them personally and their experience in that because you're trying to ultimately give that previously unseen perspective. So here's some examples here. Again, these are both from Snow. Um, this one's, you know, what we would talk about with a student feature. It would also work under if we're talking about arts or something like that. Uh, the title, Kirkwood's Got Talent. This is from Kirkwood High School. And it says, for KHS senior Jonah Roy, childhood dreams are becoming a reality. And so notice that lead is not addressing the um, five W's, maybe the H, right? It's um, more poetic in the sense that it's kind of um, hooking you in and you're saying like, oh, what is that about? And then it gets into just discussing kind of the background of this individual and saying Roy has been playing the guitar on his own at the age of five when he was nine. So it kind of gives that overview of the background and then it's gonna jump into the story. So again, it's much more personal, much more specific. The other one is um, something that we could talk about at Jesuit, um, close to my home, right? So here it says spouses and Spanish teachers in the same corridor. So um, it looks like these two teachers are married and they're discussing kind of that narrative of these two married teachers. So feature stories, honestly, are generally kind of what we write because um, we like to dig a little bit more into the story that helps create community. It fosters kind of interest. Um, people love reading about their friends, about their family, about their own experience. So uh, future stories are really, really good to write. And we'll work more and more with identifying what that looks like. And we'll look at more examples as we go forward. All right, the next category is opinion stories. And this is where some people get confused. Um, opinions really the broad category and then what fits within those are columns editorials and reviews a column gives the point of view of the author so oftentimes you would write something that you just notice in the world it attempts to persuade readers that the opinion held by the author is correct facts and evidence should be incorporated to strengthen right it's not just a soapbox you're not just ranting you want to use facts and evidence to support what you're saying and you typically will focus on one particular perspective and share why you think that perspective is correct. So that's a column where you're just giving your position using evidence. It's an opinion piece, but we'd call it specifically a column. Here's a couple of other examples of columns um, that we have. If anyone's really into art, um, Steel Clevenger is great at this in the past where she would draw, design um, editorial cartoons and those would go along oftentimes with the opinion pieces here. And so one key thing with opinions is we always write opinion right at the beginning because that alerts the reader to know that this is not um, a feature or a news story. Next, we have editorials um, and those present the official voice of the publication. So what we would do with an editorial is it would be written by Isabel Kavish and JJ. They're the ones kind of signing it because they're the e-board. Uh, Adriana and um, uh, Clarinda would also help them with that editorial because that's going to go out to the student body on behalf of the newspaper. The rest of you, though, would lend feedback, right? They might bounce an idea off you and say, we at the newspaper want to say we feel this thing and we want to say that's the stance of the newspaper. So all of us in the room would talk about it and we'd kind of debate what's going on. And as it says there, it presents the official voice of the publication. It represents the general consensus of several people instead of just the one person like a column. So it has a little bit more weight to it. One person usually assumes the role of writing the editorial, even if they don't necessarily agree with it, because it's, again, the voice of the, the group. And they typically remain unsigned because they are the voice of the entire publication, not just one person. 
So here's a couple examples of what you might do with an editorial. Um, it's time to clean up. And this is talking about, you know, messes in the cafeteria and around campus. Jesuit is fortunate to have a really clean campus, so it might not be something we write about. But, you know, that could be a point of conversation at some point. Um, education equality. This is talking about the LGD, LGBTQ plus community and making sure there is representation and voices are heard throughout the community at this high school. So those are two that come from um, the kind of broader newspaper, right? The voice of the newspaper. Again, they don't have it over here on the right, but they should be saying editorial as it is listed on the left. Lastly, and this is one I know a lot of you are interested in, um, it's really good, are just reviews. Now, typically it helps if you have a good knowledge base here. What I would always say with reviews is you're trying to teach people something. So you want to make sure that you have some sense of knowledge or you've researched something. So rather than just saying like, I really liked this song on this album and this song on this album, make sure you can talk about what you liked about it. What was interesting about the lyrics, um, the music? Was it a change from previous albums? Um, what does it signal? Is there anything noteworthy? And again, as we've always talked about newsworthy about that specific album or whatever other review. Um, book reviews would be great. Movie reviews. We, for a while, had like a Netflix kind of column where people would talk about the best of Netflix. Just remember that the, the main premise of it is that it shouldn't just be a summary. It should actually be a critique or, you know, um, an assessment of the work of art. And you're talking about that from some point of knowledge. So as it says here, they're more of an evaluation instead of a writer taking a stand. So you're kind of like assessing it. Was it good? Was it bad? Why? Why not? They should give us enough information while also allowing the reader to make some judgments for themselves. A couple examples here. I don't think we need to, um, you know, dive into this too much because I think you understand generally what reviews are. There are some great reviews on our website, so I'd encourage you to go look at those as well. All right, sports stories are kind of a, another area. And I know there's, you know, about a third of our class that's really interested in writing these, and we need good sports stories. Um, they're hard to write sometimes because it happens, right? So we just had a game last Friday. It's over now. You'd want that article to come out probably on Saturday and at Monday at the latest to make it relevant. If you're doing like a recap of the game, even better, right? Is like that night, if you're writing that recap of the game, that'd be really timely and newsworthy. That would be a news sports story when it's like recap based and you're just telling the score, what happened, what happened each quarter, that kind of stuff. Features is just like a feature we talked about earlier. You might write about the coach. Let's say it's, you know, the coach's 30th year coaching or something. Uh, maybe the coach led them to a state championship last year. There's high expectations for this year. Um, maybe it's something like a, a player who is you know, maybe not looked at because they're not the star player, but they're critical to the team's success. The best way to find good feature stories about sports is just to talk to people on the team. What's going on on the team? What's of interest? Um, what are you guys talking about on that team? So as it says below, sports features often dive deeper into team trends, outstanding plays, injuries, all that kind of stuff. We don't write about injuries really um, because we don't dive into that kind of world of it. But an interesting feature would be maybe chronicling like someone as they go through rehabbing from an injury. That could be an interesting story. So here's a couple um, examples of sports stories. This one top of his field. Um, we have a lot of wonderful outstanding athletes. And so this is something that we might write about, but notice it's just focused on this one athlete. The one over on the right here, is um, this sophomore breaking a 52 year old school yardage record. If you're ever curious about writing about like school records, things like that, you can talk to Mr. Hughes. I'm, I'm guessing there's a written out list somewhere that you could borrow and just kind of like get updates if any of those type of things happen. All right, last in this one is long form and investigative stories. I'll typically call them long form. Um, but the premise of them is like, if you are a senior, you know exactly what this is. This is effectively like a junior research paper. You're really diving deep into a topic. And it should be a topic, of course, that's newsworthy, that's relevant, and you are doing as much research as you can. You're doing a ton of interviews. Now, it could be just with one person. You could be focused on a single individual at school and diving deep into their life and all the things they've gone through, something like that. 
typically though it's a broader perspective and you're looking to um write about something that not a lot of people understand or know um and digging into you know what's special about that so at jesuit for instance how did the encounter come to jesuit right that's a big thing at our school not a lot of people might know the origin of that and why we do the things we do with it similarly um we might have investigative stories about um, changes, big changes at the school, right? If you wanted to write about a, a recap of um, the mascot decision, right? It kind of came out this summer. It's kind of got swept under the on, under the rug. Um, how did that come about? You could write a long form investigative story, just kind of discussing how that whole process went. That could be really interesting as well. Again, here's an example, um, just so you can kind of see that. But I'm going to show you a lot of examples of in depth investigative stories. I'll tell you one of the things. Um, that's really nice about investigative stories is that they can turn into really good podcasts. And one of the things you might want to think about if you're doing uh, a long form story is make sure you record your interviews and keep that audio and really organize it well so that you can create kind of a podcast later on that has more substance and that works really well. So that's all of the different story types. So when you do your pitches, it's good to say feature, but make sure you clarify what kind of feature and it's good to clarify what kind of opinion you might be writing and then what kind of news story. Often that's going to be dictated by the subject, but also now you have ways to further articulate it when you do your pitches.